it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Richard Schur, who's a distinguished uh, professor at the Department of History at the uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology. So it is an honor to uh, have you with us at the, for the annual conference of the Canadian Society for 18th Century Studies in Montreal. Uh, not only is this conference in association with the 18th Century Scottish Studies Society, but its broader theme also happens to be revolutions in 18th century social, sociability. This seems like a great opportunity to hear from a distinguished scholar such as you, who has worked on booksellers and authors' relations uh, in 18th century Scotland. Uh, what can you tell us uh, about the importance of sociability in the, in the Scottish uh, Enlightenment? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I think the research group in the history of sociability is an exciting uh, occurrence, and I'm glad to be a part of what's happening. Uh, I think sociability is at the core of the Scottish Enlightenment, and it's uh, really uh, essential to what happened in the 18th century in Scotland. I could perhaps talk a little bit about how my work started in relation to this theme, uh, because when I started out many years ago, uh, several decades ago, put it that way, uh, the interest in the Scottish Enlightenment was growing quite a lot, but it was almost uh, wholly confined to the history of thought and the history of ideas. So there was a great deal of interest in David Hume and his thought and Adam Smith and his thought and various other thinkers in the Scottish Enlightenment uh, as, as, uh, as thinkers. But there wasn't uh, very much done yet about the context in which that thought took place. So when I began my work, I, I began looking at the way that the Scottish Enlightenment was situated contextually, and particularly the institutional arrangements and the relationships between the different thinkers or literati, as they sometimes called themselves and have been called uh, ever since. And in my first book, uh, which came out of my graduate, uh, postgraduate work, uh, called uh, the uh, Church, University, and Enlightenment, uh, I uh, looked at uh, a group of uh, Scottish Enlightenment thinkers, William Robertson and some other uh, thinkers of, that, uh, of his, uh, his group, who were uh, all uh, Presbyterian ministers and also uh, men of letters, and who uh, worked together in various ways to make Scotland into a place that was more receptive to Enlightenment ideas. Uh, and in this, uh, in this first book, I tried to see how uh, groups interacted, and sociability was certainly a part of what was going on. William Robertson and his circle uh, changed the Kirk of Scotland, the Church of Scotland, from a somewhat intolerant institution to an enlightened institution. And I think that contrasts very vividly with, for example, what was happening in France at the same time where the French Enlightenment was, uh, to put it mildly, not assisted by the, uh, by the church uh, very much and often persecuted by the church. The same with the universities, which were generally not supportive of the Enlightenment in France. But after Robertson and his group, the moderate literati of Edinburgh, as I called them because they were part of a moderate party, after they came to power uh, in the church uh, and also established themselves in the University of Edinburgh, uh, the environment in Scotland became one that was quite conducive to Enlightenment thinkers and Enlightened ideas. And a good example of that is David Hume, who was uh, somewhat radical in his thought, somewhat uh, uh, unusual in out outside the mainstream, let's say, in his thinking about, um, uh, about religion in particular, but was able to thrive in Scotland in the latter part of his life uh, largely because of the William Robertson circle of moderate literati. So I started from there, and in that work, I began to see how the relationships of men of letters, uh, they are mostly men, there are not a lot of women in, involved at this time, uh, but how, how these men of letters began to uh, interact in different ways, and this included not just the church and the university, but also uh, sociable institutions such as clubs and societies. And these were of various kinds. There were uh, intellectual societies, 
that thrived in the uh, Scottish Enlightenment, uh, and there were convivial ones, and, and also there were some that were dedicated to certain kinds of causes. And all of them, uh, in one way or another, were sociable, were opportunities for people to get together and exchange ideas. In the more uh, intellectual clubs, I guess you could say, call them, uh, such as the uh, Philosophical Society of Edinburgh and the uh, Aberdeen Philosophical Society and the Glasgow Literary Society, this, the atmosphere was a little more formal. It was sociability, but it was sociability uh, mediated through a somewhat academic uh, environment in which uh, thinkers, intellectuals got together and exchanged ideas, gave formal papers perhaps in these societies and uh, critiqued each other. Uh, and then there were other clubs where uh, they were, it was not so formal, not so uh, intellectual in nature. Uh, and an example of one would be the Poker Club in Edinburgh, which was designed to be a, uh, a club dedicated to a particular cause, the cause of a Scottish militia, and which uh, uh, thrived uh, among the same uh, literati who I've been, I've been speaking about. And then I, I went on in my own work to begin to consider uh, how there was an important dimension which had not been uh, studied very much in regard to the thought of the Scottish Enlightenment, and that was the, uh, the book trade and the way that books uh, were used to advance ideas. And it occurred to me that uh, in order for uh, the great thinkers uh, of the Scottish Enlightenment to get their ideas into print, there had to be a connection with the book trade. And I then went on to write about uh, that uh, in, a, uh, a, in a book um, that, that is uh, dedicated to the way that the Scottish literati published their books and the way that a network of, of booksellers interacted with the literati in ways that were often quite sociable uh, and sometimes involving uh, personal relationships and, uh, and, and uh, even uh, hospitality, uh, such as uh, Boswell's publishers, the Dilly Brothers, uh, showed to him. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, much, Professor Scher, for your time and for your wonderful insights. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.